Uh, I have a little less time this morning, so I'm going to rifle through this pretty quick. A lot of you have to, uh, you're going to have to draw out of this anyhow what it means for, for you. I have some strategies for 2023. Um, when I, obviously this is the beginning of the new year. I've been praying, Lord, what do you have us for, for us for 2023? And uh, he did download some vision, but before I got to that, uh, the Lord gave me this interesting word, um, like, Lord, give us vision for 2023. What are we supposed to be putting our hands to? And uh, I heard this strange f- phrase, my children need to learn to live lean. I'm like, well, what on earth does that mean? The first thing I thought of was that expression, you, you ever hear the expression, lean, mean, fighting machine? That generally means somebody, you know, who's physically fit or what, what's that word, swole? I'm not up with the, the lingo. But uh, just as somebody who's physically fit, I mean, those of you know that if you're paying attention to what's happening in culture, we're living in lean times. Um, record inflation, I mean, the world seems to be in a downward spiral, but that's not the sort of lean that, that the Lord was speaking to me about. Lean, lean, mean fighting machine is somebody who's physically fit, disciplined, or focused, or intentional. I don't think there's ever been a time where we have to live so intentional about our life and our walk and the things that the Lord has for us. And as I was praying into that, the Lord gave me some strategies for 2023, six strategies, some I'll elaborate a little more on. I'm going to ask you to write these down, and I want you to pray over them. We're, we're fast, we start our fast tomorrow for 21 days. And uh, so you have 21 days to draw out what, what the Lord is, is communicating to you through these seven strategies. Um, the first one I shared a little bit about last week, and I, I know it was, it was very personal to me, but I think it's important for you also, a word from the Lord. Um, you know, there are a lot of voices out there. There are, there are people that are close to you. There are family members. There are pastors. There are prophets. And, and thank God for all of them. We, they, they encourage us. They, they help give us good clarification to things. But... Um, you need to have the sort of intimacy and walk with the Lord where you're getting words from the Lord. It could be through scripture. It could be through, it could be through the Bible. It could be through a prophetic word that you receive from somebody. But, but I'm telling you, you're, we're living in a season where you need to be directed by the Holy Spirit. You need a word for the Lord for you. Now, I'm not saying that you have to consult the Lord on every matter. You have the Holy Spirit that's in you. He guides and directs you. You don't have to you know, pray, Lord, what, what street am I supposed to take home? I mean, if he wants you to take a different route, he'll, he'll, he'll tell you. But there's, you don't have to pray for everything, and that's not what I'm talking about. But there are decisions in your life that, that maybe you would navigate through without him or consulting him. This is not the time to do that. You need a word from the Lord for you. You need a word from the Lord for, for 2023. It may be one word. It may be a phrase. It may be a scripture verse. Uh, but if you don't have that, you need one. Pray for it, that the Lord give you a word, a direction for 2023. Because we're to live intentional, purposeful lives, and we can't just wander around, just bouncing off the walls and hoping that we're going to run into the Lord's will for our lives. We have to be seeking his face and asking him for direction. You need a word from the Lord. Amen? Jesus didn't do or say anything that the, that the Holy Spirit or his Father didn't tell him to do or to say, when you when you go through when you go through Paul's journey, he was constantly guided by the Holy Spirit. He had uh, com- companions that he that he traveled with, but it was often communicated that the Holy Spirit directed him to, to do this and, and to do that. Those are the words from the Lord that you need. God wants to guide and direct your life. Now He's so compassionate, even when you're not paying attention, He's guiding and He's directing your life. But this is not a season to miss out on the Lord's direction because you might miss out on an opportunity that the Lord has for you. So you need a word from the Lord. That's the first strategy for 2023. The second, this I had to really think about and pray about when when I got this, live unhidden. And the first scripture that I thought of was 1 Thessalonians 5.5. It says, you are all the children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. I started to think about how hidden we can live in our lives. 
you know, I, somebody was talking about identity. I think Michael was talking about identity over, over communion. We live our lives trying to please the men around us. We live our lives just pleasing, the, trying to please the people around us. Now, it, it's, it's okay to be nice and polite and kind to the people around us, but God has a purpose and an identity and a direction for you. And, and, and a lot of times, the people around you can dissuade you from doing those things. You know, we, we live often through our frailties, our, our insecurities, our disabilities, the things that are wrong about us, those are kind of the filters that we, that, that we view life. God wants us to live an authentic life and just kind of live exposed and unhidden. Why do we hide? We hide because of shame. We inherited this from our mother, our first mother and our first father, Adam and Eve. The first thing they did when they sinned against God is they hid in the garden because of shame. We're filled with fear of people, what they think of us, I want to give this definition of shame. This is powerful. Shame is the painful emotion that is caused by a conscious, consciousness of guilt, failure, or impropriety that often results in the paralyzing conviction belief that one is worthless, of no value to others or to God, unacceptable, and altogether deserving of disdain, rejection, a, subjection, a subjective feeling of being worthless because of who we are. As someone said, it's the difference between making a mistake and being a mistake. I remember thinking about this when I was disciplining my, disciplining my children so they wouldn't, wouldn't attach the discipline to their identity. I would never want to, want to communicate to them that I'm disappointed in them, but I'm disappointed for them because they're taking, they're, they're taking a wrong direction or taking a wrong road. I'm disappointed for the, the purpose and the destiny that, that God has and wants to fulfill in their life, but they're taking a different direction. You know, oftentimes we just take those, those insults, those things that teachers communicate to us, our parents communicate to us, and we take those into adulthood, and it, and it keeps us from who God wants us to be. It's time to live out in the open, to be authentic to live unhidden. You need to live in a community and have friends around you where you can be vulnerable like that, where you can live transparent. If you're not doing well, let them know that you're not doing well. I'm not talking about seeking a pity party, but I'm talking about if you're not doing well, if you're struggling, if you're struggling with depression, or if you're struggling with sin, you need to find confidants, people that are close to you that you can share those things with instead of hiding them because the enemy finds power and secrecy. He'll keep you trapped there, and you'll never discover who, dis discover who God wants you to be. So this year, endeavor to develop relationships, a church community, people that you can trust, where you can live out your authentic self, living unhidden. Amen? 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There is no temptation that has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is so faithful, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. There is no temptation, there is no sin that is uncommon to man. We, we're all in the same boat. You don't have to be embarrassed about what you're going through because there's probably 25 people in this room that are going through the exact same thing that you are. 1 John 4.18 says, There's no fear in love, but perfect, perfect love casts out or drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. The one thing that God does for you, and he does many things, but when you draw close to Jesus, you don't have to fear because he sees all. You're exposed to him, and you can trust him, and he's faithful, and he's, he's there to comfort you. He'll cast out that fear that you have because he casts it out with this perfect love. When you know that you're loved by Jesus, that he's your friend, really everything looks small compared to that. 2 Timothy 1, seven for the Spirit of God gave us, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power and love and self-discipline. The third strategy. Someone sent this to me through a text, a good friend of mine. I don't think people understand how encouraging these things are to me. They find stuff, they find these videos or these scripture verses and they shoot them. 
off to me in a text, and it's like, man, I needed that. Well, somebody sent me this, this text. It was a word from Bob Sorge. Anybody know who Bob Sorge is? He was part of Edom Fellowship. He, got, he has some sort of issue where he can only speak like, like an hour out of the day. He's got an issue with his, with his voice. And the guy was a worship leader and a speaker. And now he's written you know, many books since then. But he wasn't even looking for a word from the Lord, but the Lord gave him a word from the Lord for 2023. And it really, really spoke to me, praying that it speaks to you. He read a scripture, or he, he cited a scripture in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. It says, be on your guard, stand firm in faith, be courageous, and be strong. And his word was, you need to be brave. We are certainly living in a time where you need to be brave. You got to pray about what that means for you, but what it means for me is this, this is, this is me. This is what you got. You know, all my struggles, all my insecurities. Um, I'm on a stage almost every Sunday morning. There's things that I just can't hide from you anymore. It's just, it's just getting over that and, and saying, you're going to walk this out with me. Um, it's, it's dealing with those reoccurring thoughts about, you know, what I'm, what I'm going through. And it's, I'm not often in low places. I want you to know that I'm full of hope. But, you know, we're... We're frail human beings, and we have emotions, and occasionally you, do, you, you just get hit with stuff. And, you know, God's calling me to be bold and be courageous and to be brave, move forward with confidence and bravery, not let timidity take me over. I found this quote from, this, uh, from the great World War II general, George Patton. He said, all men are timid on entering any fight. Whether it is the first or last battle, all of us are timid. Cowards are those that let their timidity get the better of their manhood. We all struggle with insecurities, but what are we going to do with it? Are we going to let it keep us down from speaking out, from moving forward? We can't do that. We are, we are living in a season where we cannot do that. You can shrink back and accomplish nothing for the Lord and let your timidity take you over, or you can be bold and courageous and do the thing that God has called you to do. The fourth strategy and I don't know all of what this means. I'm just going to share it with you. He told me, my people need to find their voice. Maybe that means something specific to some of you. I prayed about it. It seemed like he was talking about our place of influence. God, God has a, a sphere of influence for every single person in this room. I know you think that you don't have any influence at all, but you do. God's given you gifts, he's given you abil abilities, and, he, and he's given you an assignment. And you don't know what that assignment is. That's why you need to pray for a word from the Lord. You need to know what your assignment is. When you know that your assignment is from the Lord, then nothing, nothing stops you, and nothing, nothing holds you back. But you need, to, you need to find your voice. That may be literal voice. You need to speak out, or could be talking about gifting. But there, there's something that maybe has lot, like dormant in you, that needs to come out of you, that needs to spill out of you, you need a word from the Lord so you know what that is, and then you need, then you need to be brave, and you need to exercise that thing. I came across this, this quote, and I think it's applicable, especially when it's talking about if your gift is to speak in front of other people or to share truth, because we're, we're truth seekers. We're, we're to be about truth. We're to, to communicate truth. But the, there's a difference between speaking without thought and speaking truth. You know, in that thing, whatever that gift is, gift is do it full of love and do it with, with humility. Amen? The fifth strategy is discerning of spirits. I'm not talking about going down the twilight labyrinth and trying to figure out what principality and power is over Rochester, the city of Rochester, because they're probably, I'm sure there is. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, when Jesus was with the, uh, the, those Gadarene demoniacs and he cast the demons out of them and they went into the pigs and the pigs ran off the cliff, he didn't ask them what their name was and they didn't give their name. He just cast the demons out, they went into the pigs and the pigs went off the, went off the cliff. But we need to be discerning of spirits. Scripture talks about it. In the list of giftings in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11, I'm just going to read them. It says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given the Spirit of a message of wisdom, 
to another a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another one distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and still another interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of the one same spirit and he distributes them each to one as he determines. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, powers, the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Your battle is not with people, it's not with your classmates. It's not with the people that you work with. It's not with your neighbor. Your battle is the spirit that's behind the thing that's motivating them. You need the eyes to see and ears to hear so that you can be discerning in your prayers and you can get rid of those, those demonic principalities and powers that are controlling forces in people's lives and in our city. Chris Valentin says, discerning of spirits gives us the ability to distinguish the unseen beings that are in cohabitation with. A vital function in developing spiritual intelligence. Not only that, but it also empowers believers to distinguish between what is real and what is false. To clarify, it's not just merely discernment or wisdom for that matter, nor is it distinguishing only evil spirits. The gift the gift is brilliant in that it exposes what influence, what influence and intentions the spirit realm is having, whether on a person, in an atmosphere, over a city, or over a nation. Maturely operating in this gift enables you to be keenly in tune and aware of the spiritual weapons formed against people, but it also gives you eyes to see the light of Christ amid disorienting days of chaos, of which we are certainly living in today. You understand what this means, don't you? The gift of discernment of spirits not only gives us access behind enemy lines and exposes their plots and schemes, but it also uncovers the Holy Spirit solutions that disarm the devil and remedy today's complex challenges. Think of this gift as a giant spotlight. It exposes everything unseen, adversaries and emissaries that are sent to help us and paired with the authority God's given you empowers God's people to be incredibly in tune, intelligent, and, influence, and influential. And he gives you four ways to develop these discernment of gifts. If you look this up online, you can find this. You ask for it. You know, if you come across a gift that you would like to have that could be useful in your arsenal in life, pray for it. Ask for it until you get that gift. The Holy Spirit's in you to develop that gift. Ask for that gift. Start with yourself. If you want discerning of spirits, you might want to know the spirits that come, come against you that are assigned to you to attack you, to tempt you. Third, learn what, what the gift is and what it is not. I'd recommend surrounding yourself with believers who are healthily functioning in that gift. I think Hector Santos wrote a, wrote a book about, well, the gifts of the spirit, but specifically talking about discerning of spirits. That'd be a good book to pick up. And then um, read your Bible. Jesus and the disciples operated in it. Do what they do. And lastly, the last strategy for 2023 that the Holy Spirit spoke to me is find your tribe. That could mean a lot of things. Could mean if you're, if you're watching online and you don't have a home church or a congregation that you belong to, you need to belong to a church family somewhere. You need to be fellowshipping somewhere on a regular basis. You need to be hobnobbing and rubbing against other believers who are encouraging you and praying for you. You can't do church online. You can watch messages online, but you can't do church online. You have to be around, you have to be around people, laying hands on people and having hands laid on you. I realize that, that, that sometimes that's the only option that people have. But if you have an option, you need to be near people. Don't let anything keep you away from the church and gathering together with the saints. There's power, there's power in numbers. There's just something that happens here in the presence of, of believers that doesn't happen when you're alone in your room. 
God's put us in a family. He puts a solitary in family. So find your tribe. That might mean for the past 25 years, you don't have any close friends whatsoever. You keep people at a distance. For whatever reason, you keep them at a distance. You need Jonathans in your life. You need to be a David to people. You need Samuels. You need people that are mentoring you. You need people in your life. You cannot navigate this life. Not a, you, you may have done okay for the past 10 years, but you can't do that anymore. You need to find your tribe. You need to find people that you can, that you can draw close to, that you can share anything with. Those may be only a couple, but there's only a few people in my life that I just let it all hang out. But you need people like that. And I, I've, met, I've met guys that haven't had that. They, they've never had that. And that's dangerous because in a multitude of counselors, there's wisdom. Amen? Somebody mentioned to me last Sunday, Pastor David, who's your band of brothers? I had to think about it for a minute. You know, I had a, I had a close friend. He was an elder with me. He went to Henrietta Christian Fellowship. We planted a church together. His name was Michael Richard, and he passed away of a brain tumor. He was... He was a big brother to me. I could share anything with him and he would never judge me. And when he passed away, I never replaced him. You know, I didn't, I, I did, maybe, maybe I was just wounded. Maybe I did, just didn't feel comfortable drawing close to anybody, but you need people like that in your life where you can just let it rip. Even when you're struggling with God, even if, you, even if you're angry with God. He's bigger than your anger. He's not concerned about that. You need covenant community. I want to mention this because Julia mentioned it before, before service, some of the backstory of Damar. Damar had a tribe. He had a covenant community. He was a strong believer, a strong believer. He was a Christian. You know, so he had that, he had that heritage. So while he, was, while he was laying on that field, he was a son of God. He had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I think that's a big reason why he's walking around. Well, I don't know if he's walking around yet, but he's talking today. Um, but he was part of that sort of community. There's protection in covenant community. So whatever that word means for you, find your tribe, find your covenant community, build relationships with people. We are not an island unto ourselves. I could never navigate this life without the people in my life. I couldn't do it. I know that I wouldn't be a pastor today. Uh, Mike Richards is probably one of the reasons why I'm still a pastor today, him and my dad, because it's not something that I naturally gravitated towards, but I know that God has a call on my life, but that's, that's why I'm here. But I never would have been here if I couldn't step on the shoulders of the people before me. You need people like that in your life. You can't do it alone. So discover who your tribe is. Those are seven strategies the Holy Spirit downloaded to me. I'm going to have Pastor Laura close up.